Military technology is always changing, advancing, and pushing the limits of what was once thought of as science fiction. The U.S. Air Force, a leader in this field, is constantly investing in cutting-edge and innovative weaponry. Starting with the revolutionary directed energy weapons, join us as we examine 10 such weapons that show an unprecedented level of development. Number 10, F.A. Kex, Next Generation Air Dominance Fighter. To set the ball rolling, let's see the amazing F.A. Kex, Next Generation Air Dominance Fighter, that is set to take over the airspace. One of the most ambitious projects being undertaken by the U.S. Air Force as it strives to preserve air dominance is the creation of the Next Generation Air Dominance Fighter FAX. The goal of this program is focused on creating a successor for the FA-18E Super Hornet and FA-18G Growler by the year 2030. Furthermore, the FAXX is designed to create a highly advanced multi-role manned aircraft that can maintain air dominance in the future battle space. To achieve all of these objectives, the FAXX will need to perform a variety of tasks, including air-to-air -air combat, ground attack, and perhaps even electronic warfare that can rival and outweigh the evolving possibilities offered by prospective adversaries. Before we go any further, let's talk about the MUM-T, which means manned-unmanned teaming. MUM-T is the use of manned and unmanned assets cooperatively to accomplish a common mission goal, as of now, this phenomenon is quickly emerging as one of the most important technological advancements that will give rise to future air power. As the idea of manned-unmanned teaming transforms into becoming increasingly prevalent among military forces, one of the key characteristics envisaged for the FAX is its integration with unmanned systems. The FA-6 is anticipated to function with a quick decision-making speed and needed accuracy. In addition to this, advanced stealth technology will also likely be incorporated into the F.A. Kex to improve survivability in contested airspace, while lasers and other directed energy weapons would also be anticipated. While the possibility of the F.A. XX is exciting, there's a greater joy to know that these technologies could provide a defensive capability against incoming missiles and possibly an attacking capability against enemy aircraft and ground targets. However, the program could possibly face significant obstacles. Maintaining the balance between the FAAXX's multi-role capabilities is another problem, as is the incorporation of modern technologies such as artificial intelligence, directed energy weapons, and sophisticated stealth technology. In addition to being excellent at air dominance operations, the aircraft must also be able to do ground assault reconnaissance command and control nodes within a network of unmanned systems, enhancing its ability to operate effectively with great adaptability and resilience. We look forward to seeing the FAXX come with next-generation avionics and sensor systems, possibly with artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities to improve situational and maybe electronic warfare missions. Number 9. Hypersonic Missiles Next on is the hypersonic missiles. We all know missiles, as used in the military, are directed airborne, long-range weapons that can fly on their own power, typically by a jet engine or rocket motor. During World War II, Nazi Germany produced a number of missiles that were the first to be employed operationally. However, the development of missiles had evolved over time into something more sophisticated. The creation and use of hypersonic missiles stand out as a crucial military breakthrough, seeking to improve the offensive and defensive capabilities of the U.S. Air Force. These fast, destructive weapons are known as hypersonic because they can literally move at least five times the speed of sound. Take, for instance, a hypersonic missile traveling at Mach 5 would move at a speed of around one mile per second. In the field of modern warfare, these weapons' incredible speed and maneuverability constitute a game-changing element for the entire U.S. Air Force. So far so good, there are two main types of hypersonic missiles, which are hypersonic glide vehicles, HGVs, and hypersonic cruise missiles, HCMs. While hypersonic cruise missiles are propelled throughout the flight by high-speed air-breathing engines, Hypersonic ground vehicles, HGVs, are launched into the atmosphere from a rocket and glide to their target. Both variations are made to be extremely maneuverable and to sustain speeds in the higher reaches of the hypersonic speed range. Modern missile defense systems can be breached by hypersonic missiles, which is one of their main advantages. 
They provide enormous difficulties for current missile defense technologies because of their high speed, erratic flight trajectories, and low altitude flight. Furthermore, once a missile has been launched, the opportunity for response or interception is substantially less due to their quick delivery times. These features make hypersonic missiles an intimidating threat and a potent strategic asset. To this, the U.S. Air Force, working with other defense industries, has made significant investments in the development of hypersonic weapons. One such project that has undergone thorough testing is the air-launched rapid response weapon known as the AGM-183. AGM-183 is a boost glide system that was created to launch from an aircraft before hypersonically gliding to its target. Its successful testing marks a significant advancement in the U.S. hypersonic capability. Another program in development is the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept Hawk. It aims to advance the capabilities of the U.S. Air Force in this field by creating air-launched hypersonic cruise missiles. However, hypersonic missile development is not without difficulties, though. The massive heat and pressure created by traveling at hypersonic speeds put a great deal of strain on the missile's structure, necessitating the use of tough and advanced materials and designs. Accurate navigation at such high velocities is another significant issue for these missiles. Nevertheless, these problems are being mitigated by ongoing study and development. Although the creation and use of hypersonic weapons have geopolitical repercussions, their ability to revolutionize warfare is undeniable, and their integration into the operational framework of the United States Air Force demonstrates an unwavering commitment to maintaining national security and a strategic advantage in an era of rapid advancements in technology and shifting warfare dynamics. Number 8. MQ-NEXT the MQ-NEXT is an unmanned aircraft systems program that serves as an upgrade to the current MQ-9, which is the Advanced Battle Management System, ABMs. The MQ-NEXT promises a significant leap forward in evolution as it aims to create a drone with improved payload armament capabilities, increased range, improved survivability in disputed areas, and increased endurance. This innovation is specially built in order to undertake persistent surveillance, execute precision strikes, and support a number of other mission sets in difficult and complicated circumstances, which is indeed in line with the strategic needs of the U.S. Air Force. Furthermore, the MQ-NEXT's integration with machine learning and artificial intelligence technologies is one of its primary features. These technologies improve the drone's autonomy, allow it to process massive volumes of data in real time, and lighten the cognitive strain on human operators. The system is anticipated to be able to recognize targets, evaluate threats, and make tactical judgments under human supervision to uphold moral and legal bounds. Have you ever wondered where the MQ-NEXT stands in terms of a network-centric approach to operations? Well, the unmanned aircraft system UAS is intended to function as a component of a larger interconnected network of systems that share data and work together with other resources to accomplish particular mission objectives. This marks a shift away from conventional platform-centric warfare toward a more comprehensive network-centric paradigm, which promises increased operational flexibility, responsiveness, and effectiveness. By combining stealth technology and cutting-edge defensive systems, the MQ-NEXT is anticipated to be more resilient in contested airspace and avoid detection and engagement with adversarial air defenses. This characteristic is essential for the UAS to function well in high-threat scenarios and against near-peer adversaries. Regardless of these high expectations, there are many obstacles to overcome in the creation of the MQ-NEXT. To assure reliability and adhere to moral and legal requirements, the integration of powerful AI and machine learning technologies is a challenging endeavor that needs careful testing and validation. Advances in stealth and defense technology are also required for greater survivability, but incorporating these technologies into a platform built for endurance and payload capacity may be challenging. In addition, the network-centric operational paradigm creates new weaknesses that need to be addressed, such as the danger of cyber attacks and the difficulty in assuring secure and reliable data sharing between systems. Despite these difficulties, the U.S. Air Force's dedication to innovation and technological advancement has been demonstrated through the MQ-NEXT program. 
A tantalizing glimpse into the future of air warfare is provided by the promise of a UAS that can conduct long-duration surveillance and strike missions, process massive amounts of data in real time, and work as a part of a network-centric force. The MQ Next program represents a significant step towards realizing this future. Number 7. Loyal Wingman Combat Drones If you are into photography and even journalism, you'd have probably gotten used to non-military drones by now because they seem to have become a mainstay in our world today. Over the past 10 years, the use of non-military drones has greatly increased. UAVs are employed for a variety of tasks besides surveillance and delivery, including drone journalism, disaster response, asset protection, wildlife monitoring, firefighting, communications relay, healthcare, and agriculture. However, drones date back to the 1930s, when the U.S. Navy also started experimenting with radio-controlled aircraft, which led to the development of the Curtis N-2C2 drone in 1937. The TG-2 aircraft was used to control the N-2C2 remotely, and by 1938, N-2C2 anti-aircraft target drones were in use. But now, one of the groundbreaking concepts that would change how air combat operations are conducted in the future is the idea of a loyal wingman. It entails the deployment of semi-autonomous unmanned combat aerial vehicles, UCAVs, with manned aircraft to complete a variety of missions, improving operational effectiveness and lowering the risk to human pilots. The Loyal Wingman drones are designed to be able to carry out a variety of mission types, such as surveillance, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and even direct combat missions where they can engage the adversary with onboard weaponry. The capabilities of conventional manned aircraft would be greatly enhanced by such a variety of features, enabling more adaptable and reliable operations. The degree of autonomy these UCAVs have is one of what makes the Loyal Wingman concept unique. Despite being built to operate under the direction of a human pilot, they are also capable of performing some tasks independently using artificial intelligence. This semi-autonomous capability enables the human pilot to concentrate on mission management as the Loyal Wingman can complete tasks without constant human input. Additionally, the Loyal Wingman drones were built with modularity in mind, allowing them to be outfitted with a variety of mission-specific payloads that greatly increase their adaptability to a variety of operational requirements. Whether it's an electronic warfare module for intercepting enemy communications or a sensor package for intelligence gathering, the Loyal Wingman's modularity enables mission-tailored configuration. As part of a larger effort to integrate unmanned technologies into its operational framework, the U.S. Air Force has been doing a lot of research and underground work on the Loyal Wingman. Programs like the Skyborg Initiative are working to produce autonomous, inexpensive, unmanned aircraft that can work alongside human fighters to complete difficult and risky missions. But the creation and use of devoted wingman systems offer a number of difficulties. Technical difficulties include integrating artificial intelligence and providing secure communication between manned and unmanned systems. Additionally, there are moral and legal issues to take into account, particularly with regard to autonomous weapon systems. Survival in contested airspace is another important issue as well. When there is a survival contest in environments with advanced air defense systems, future battles could arise. Due to these difficulties, the Loyal Wingman drones would employ stealth technologies and defenses to increase their survivability. By exploring and investing in these types of innovative concepts, the U.S. Air Force is securing its position at the cutting edge of advancements in technology in the military aviation realm. Loyal Wingman systems represent an important development in air warfare one that leverages unmanned systems and artificially intelligent technology to enhance the efficiency and security of manned aircraft. Number 6. Next Generation Jammer The ability to control the electromagnetic spectrum is often key in modern warfare. Control, exploitation, and disruption of this spectrum are essential for winning in today's high-tech battles. A new airborne electronic warfare system called the Next Generation Jammer is being developed to take over the role of the AN-ALQ-99, 
used on military aircraft like the EA-18G. Currently, the EA-18G Growler of the U.S. Navy and the Royal Australian Air Force, as well as the now-retired EA-6B Prowler of the U.S. Marine Corps, are equipped with the AN-ALQ-99. The aforementioned aircraft are to offer modified escort jamming from outside the range of known surface-to-air missiles with the main purpose of suppressing air defenses. The next-generation jammer NGJ is a weapon system created to obstruct and prevent hostile use of this spectrum. The next-generation jammer NGJ is a family of sophisticated electronic warfare suites created for the U.S. Air Force and Navy as a considerable improvement over earlier jamming technology. The NGJ features improved range, precision, and power capabilities. It has the ability to jam numerous frequencies at once, interfere with unfriendly radar and communication systems, and even trick enemy sensors into believing something false. The NGJ is more than simply a straightforward jammer. It is an intelligent device that can scan the electromagnetic spectrum, recognize dangers, and use the best jamming method to counter those threats. The NGJ is a crucial component of the U.S. Air Force's electronic warfare strategy due to its flexibility and resilience in a variety of combat situations. The modular nature of NGJ makes it possible for ongoing improvements and combat versatility. The breadth of missions it can assist is increased by its versatility, which enables integration with a variety of airborne platforms. One of the systems that will use the NGJ, making it possible for greater electromagnetic spectrum dominance during naval operations, is the U.S. Navy's EA-18G Growler, which is a carrier-based electronic warfare aircraft. One of the important components of the NGJ program currently in the development stage is the NGJ Mid-Band NGJMB, which is intended to replace the ALQ-99 tactical jamming system already installed on the E-18G Growler. Significantly advanced capabilities in disabling and denying adversary electronic systems are promised by NGJMB. The NGJ signifies a major advancement in electronic warfare technology. In modern warfare, where victory frequently depends on control of the electromagnetic spectrum, the capacity to deny, degrade, and fool hostile electronic equipment offers a crucial edge. The creation and use of the NGJ highlight the U.S. Air Force's dedication to keeping an edge in this crucial area of modern warfare. Without a doubt, the significance of electronic warfare and other technologies will only increase as technology progresses. Number 5. Directed Energy Weapons, DWS. In the world of modern warfare, the effectiveness of military operations is greatly influenced by elements like speed, precision, and impact when using directed energy weapons. To achieve this, the U.S. Air Force is creating Directed Energy Weapons, DWS, which are intended to project energy in a targeted direction without the need for a projectile. By introducing capabilities that were previously the stuff of science fiction, this cutting-edge technology has the potential to completely transform air combat. There are two main types of DWS, high-energy lasers, HELs, and high-power microwaves, HPMs, each of which has its own set of benefits. By carefully targeting and destroying enemy objects, HELs high-intensity laser beams can reduce collateral damage. Because of their lightning-fast movement, they are also effective at defending against impending dangers like missiles or drones. On the other hand, Operation HPMs release brief energy bursts that can take down electronic equipment and systems. In a world where reliance on digital technology is growing, such a capacity may disrupt adversary activities without resulting in casualties or physical harm. It makes HPMs perfect for circumstances where using fatal force would be undesirable or where traditional weapons would inflict excessive harm. The U.S. Air Force has been actively experimenting with these technologies in a variety of situations. For example, the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL, has been working on the Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator Shield Program, which aims to outfit aircraft with portable high-power laser systems for self-defense. The successful test of Shield in 2021, in which it successfully shot down air-launched missiles in flight, was a crucial turning point for the advancement of airborne laser systems. An ongoing project focusing on the development of HPMs is the Counter-Electronics High-Powered Microwave Advanced Missile Project, CHAMP. 
When CHAMP missiles explode, microwaves are released that may disable electronic systems, effectively rendering hostile capabilities useless. Despite their immense potential, DWS is not without difficulties. Among the most significant difficulties addressed by researchers are the production and administration of large levels of energy, preserving the quality of the beam over long distances, and modifying the systems to match diverse platforms. Despite this, efforts are being undertaken to get over these obstacles and put these technologies into use. The development of DWs represents an evolutionary advancement in warfare heralding a time when conflicts are fought using energy pulses and light beams. From the look of things, it's not as impossible as it originally looked to disable adversary capabilities with little collateral harm and more humane alternatives. The current achievements demonstrate the U.S. Air Force's dedication to maintaining its leadership in military technology innovation while fundamentally changing the nature of air combat. Number 4. Artificial Intelligence Integration we all know how well-developed AIs are becoming nowadays. In fact, the evolution of AIs has brought a remarkable change in the way things are done and how things are done. Making specific software components, like voice synthesizers, compatible with other components like common sense knowledge bases, is the fundamental concept behind artificial intelligence systems integration, which aims to produce larger, broader, and more powerful AI systems. Also, Message routing or communication protocols that the software components use to connect with one another, frequently through a middleware blackboard system, is one of the key approaches that have been proposed for integration. While the majority of artificial intelligence systems utilize integrated technologies, the military space is not left behind. The U.S. Air Force is incorporating artificial intelligence AI into its weapon systems to streamline operations and improve efficiency at a time when data-driven decision-making is crucial. The use of AI, a potent instrument capable of quickly processing and interpreting enormous volumes of data, is thought to revolutionize military operations. Enhancing decision-making ability is one of the main advantages of AI integration. AI algorithms have the power to analyze a massive volume of data from many sources in real time, giving pilots and commanders valuable insights to make quick, informed decisions. This capability is especially useful in complex and dynamic fighting scenarios, where quick action is essential. Additionally, the field of surveillance and reconnaissance is being revolutionized by AI integration. Artificial intelligence AI-powered systems can evaluate photos and sensor data to identify targets and threats, enabling swift and effective action by cutting down on the time needed for data analysis. AI enables real-time danger identification and reaction, greatly increasing the effectiveness of surveillance and reconnaissance operations. AI also plays a crucial role in unmanned systems, including drones and other unmanned vehicles. Although the integration of AI and military systems is not without difficulties, vehicles equipped with AI can perform tasks autonomously, reducing the workload on human operators and allowing them to focus on mission-critical tasks. This increases efficiency and improves safety by reducing the risk to human personnel. To work properly, AI algorithms would be educated on high-quality data. However, ensuring such data is accessible for various military missions could be a difficult process. Additionally, there are moral and legal concerns with AI and military applications, particularly in relation to autonomous weapons. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Take a close look at this image. Looks like a weapon that operates in the air, but it doesn't look like anything we've seen before or in recent times. It looks like a baby dragon unleashing fire on the earth. What do you think this weapon is? And if you're asked to give it a name, what would it be? Let's know in the comment section. Number three, Next Generation Air Dominance NGAD program. The Next Generation's Air Dominance program. NGAD is the U.S. Air Force's enthusiastic endeavor to retain air superiority in the 21st century and even beyond. This far-reaching scheme seeks to conceptualize and create a familial relationship of mechanisms and systems that will function collectively to guarantee dominance in the air. The NGAD program is not exclusively focused on a substitution for the F-22 Raptor or the F-35 Lightning II. Rather, it takes into account a wider spectrum of interconnected systems, such as manned aircraft, unmanned aerial vehicles, and network-centric capabilities, 
which together constitute a unified air dominance infrastructure. The NGAD system will use advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and autonomous systems to satisfy future air superiority requirements. The NGAD program has already made major advancements. It promises an integrated system where human and unmanned platforms, sensors, weapons, and even cyber and electronic warfare capabilities work together to enable quick decision-making and response in a highly competitive environment. However, the NGAD program faces significant challenges given the complex nature of the program. Integrating advanced technologies and capabilities across a diverse array of platforms and systems will be a demanding task that requires creative solutions and rigorous testing. It became known in 2020 that a full-scale flight demonstrator was previously constructed and flown, demonstrating the Air Force's commitment to responsibility and the swift advancements it is making. Additionally, the program will need to strike a balance between capability improvements and budget and schedule constraints. It would control the cost of creating and procuring these extremely advanced weapons and guarantee that they can be deployed in a timely way to counter emerging threats. Number 2. Space-Based Weapon Systems Whenever there is a mention of space, people tend to think about the existence of aliens and whether or not they would invade our world. But do you realize there is a lot more about space? In fact, space wars and orbital weaponry have been in existence for some time now. In simple terms, any weapon in orbit around a big body, like a planet or moon, is considered to be an orbital weapon. During the Cold War, both the U.S. and the USSR developed a number of orbital weapon systems, while Nazi Germany was also working on ideas for the Sun Cannon, an orbital mirror that would be used to concentrate and weaponize sunlight beams during World War II. There are no known operational orbital weapon systems as of December 2022, but numerous countries have set up orbital monitoring networks to monitor other countries or their armed forces. Nevertheless, in recognition of the strategic importance of space, the U.S. Air Force has started to invest extensively in the development of weapon systems that can operate from this new domain space. Space-based weapon systems offer a new frontier in military capabilities. The main benefit of space-based systems is their constant global coverage, which allows them to engage targets anywhere on the globe and provide vital ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities. Additionally, by enhancing terrestrial communication networks, these devices can enable secure international military communication. There are various different types of space-based weapon systems being investigated right now, one of which involves kinetic systems like anti-satellite ASAT missiles, capable of disrupting enemies by preventing disabling or destroying their satellites. A remarkable avenue for development is directed energy weapons that are situated in space, such as lasers or high-powered microwaves. These systems might offer a quick response capability against a number of threats, such as ballistic missiles, other satellites, or even ground-based targets. Another important component of space-based weapon systems is space-based sensor networks. These networks could offer global, real-time ISR capabilities that would improve situational awareness on the battlefield. They could also detect, track, and provide targeting information for a variety of threats, including low-flying cruise missiles and hypersonic gliders. The U.S. Air Force is also considering the possibility of manufacturing technologies and on-orbit servicing assembly to increase the resilience and capability of its space-based assets. These technologies would make it possible to maintain, upgrade, or even build systems in space, which would lower launch costs and improve system longevity and flexibility. Notwithstanding, there's a shortcoming. The proliferation of space-based weapon systems could result in an increase in space debris, which could pose risks to all spacefaring nations and make it more difficult to sustain long-term space operations. As a result, any advancement in this field must consider the wider and long-term implications for space. Number 1. B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber Finally on this is the B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber. When you hear the word bomb, you can imagine the sound that follows. Boom! Yes, guns are dangerous, but bombs are more devastating because bombs are seen as weapons of mass destruction. A bomb is an explosive weapon that releases energy violently and abruptly through the exothermic reaction of an explosive substance. 
As such, one could only imagine the effect of the B-21 Raider Stealth Bomber. The next-generation Stealth Bomber for the U.S. Air Force promises a considerable improvement in strategic bombing capacity. The Doolittle Raiders of World War II inspired the naming of this long-range strike bomber, which will serve as the core of the Air Force's strategic deterrence force in the future. The B-21 Raiders' advanced stealth capabilities are one of its most important traits. Long-range strike bombers, which are frequently tasked with delivering precision strikes against high-value targets in the heart of the enemy territory, would have stealth technology in order to evade enemy radar systems and penetrate heavily defended airspace, increasing the aircraft's survivability in hostile environments. The long-range capability of the B-21 is another distinguishing feature. The U.S. Air Force's global reach will be increased by the design of the Raider, which can operate far from home bases. This will enable the Air Force to quickly project force around the world while acting as an effective strategic deterrence against potential enemies. The next generation of avionics and sensor systems are also anticipated for the B-21 Raider, and these will improve the aircraft's situational awareness and targeting abilities and enable it to precisely engage targets in complex and dynamic fighting conditions. The B-21's effective integration with other air, ground, and sea-based assets will also be ensured by sophisticated communication technologies, enabling coordinated network-centric operations. Additionally, the B-21's open architectural design allows for future system upgrades as new technologies become available. The Air Force's forward-looking approach to the B-21's development, which took into account the rapid pace of technological advancement in the military aviation sector, is demonstrated by this attribute, which ensures that the aircraft stays at the cutting edge of technology throughout its service life. In addition, the Raider will have to operate in increasingly contested and complex airspace where advanced air defense systems and electronic warfare capabilities are present. The program would need to succeed in overcoming the challenges to guarantee the B-21's efficacy and viability. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.